Hello and welcome to this video by IntelliPath. In this video, I'll be talking about microservices. Let's take a look at agenda. We'll begin this session by understanding what are microservices. Then we will look into microservice architecture and how is the microservice architecture different from monolithic architecture. Later that, we'll understand its characteristics and when you should use microservices. Then we'll learn about who use microservices, its pros and cons. And finally, we'll look into examples of microservices along with its future scope. I hope I have made myself clear with the agenda. So without wasting any time, let's get started with this session. But before we begin the session, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you'll never miss any update from us. What are microservices? The creation of a software, that is software development, can be approached using an architectural and organizational strategy known as microservices, which consists of small autonomous services that communicate over clearly defined APIs. Owners of these services are discrete, tiny teams. Applications may be scaled more easily and quickly thanks to microservices architecture which can shorten the time it may take to market new features. Let's try to understand the microservices architecture. Similar to how the term microservices lacks formal definition, there is no universal model to describe or represent this architectural approach in systems. However, you may anticipate that the majority of microservices systems will share a few salient features. Let's take a look at them. First one is several elements. By definition, software developed as microservices can be divided into several component services. Why? In order to allow autonomous deployment, modification and redeployment of each of these services without jeopardizing the integrity of an application. As a result, rather than needing to relaunch complete apps, you might only need to modify one or more specific services. However, there are several drawbacks to this strategy, such as expensive remote calls, which includes instead of in-process calls, coarser-grained remote APIs, and more complexity when redistributing responsibilities between components. Designed for business. Typically, the microservices architecture is structured on the priorities and capabilities of the company. Microservice architecture makes use of cross-functional teams as opposed to a traditional monolithic development strategy where various teams each have a specific focus on, for example, UIs, databases, technological layers, or server-side logic. Each team is responsible for creating distinct products based on one or more independent services that communicate via message bus. Easy routing. Similar to the traditional Unix system, microservices take requests, process them, and produce a response. This contrasts with how many other solutions like ESB or enterprise service buses operate where sophisticated technologies are employed for message routing, choreography, and the application of business rules. You could say that microservices have dumb pipelines through which information flows and smart endpoints that process the information and apply logic. Decentralized, old school techniques of centralized governance aren't ideal because microservices encompasses a diversity of technology and platforms. The microservices community prefers decentralized governance because its creators work hard to create helpful solutions that may be used by others to address similar issues. Decentralized data management is supported by microservice architecture just like decentralized governance. In monolithic systems, various applications share single logical database. Each service typically maintains its own database in a microservice application. Resilient to failure. Microservices are made to handle failures like a well-rounded child. Since many different distinct services are interacting with one another, it is very conceivable for a service to fail any number of reasons. In these cases, the client should maintain the functionality of its nearby services while gracefully exiting. 
Monitoring microservices, however, helps lessen the chance of a failure. This requirement makes microservices more difficult than monolithic systems architecture for obvious reasons. Evolutionary. In evolving systems where it is impossible to fully predict the kinds of devices that may access your application in the future, evolutionary microservices architecture is a perfect solution. Many programs being monolithic design but can gradually be changed to microservices that communicate over an earlier monolithic architecture using APIs when new requirements emerge. Having mentioned the term monolithic, let's see how is the microservices architecture different from monolithic architecture. All processes in monolithic architecture are closely connected and operate in a single service. This implies that the entire architecture must be scaled if one process of the application suffers a spike in demand. As a monolithic application's code base expands, adding new features or updating existing one becomes more challenging. This complexity restricts experimentation and making it challenging to put novel concepts into practice. Because they include many interdependent and tightly coupled processes, Monolithic designs increase the risk for application availability. An application is created using a microservice architecture where each application process is run as a service by independent components. These services connect with one another, utilizing each and simple APIs and clearly defined interfaces. Each service has a particular function and is designed with the business capabilities in mind. Each service can be updated, launched, and expanded to match the demand for a particular functions of an application because they are separately operated. Here are some characteristics of the microservices in general. Autonomous. In a microservice architecture, each component service can be created, deployed, run, and scaled independently of the other services. Services are not required to exchange any of their implementation or source code with other services. Individual component communication takes place through clearly specified APIs. Specialized. Each service is tailored to a certain set of skills and focused on addressing a particular issue. The service can be divided into smaller services. Developers add more code to it over time and the service grows sophisticated. Now the question arises, when to use microservices? In the end, any size business that has an application that requires frequent updates and counter fluctuating traffic patterns or demand close to real-time communication can profit from using a microservices design. Next, we will see who exactly uses microservices. Microservices are employed by a number of the biggest financial services firms in the world as well as social networking giants like Facebook and Twitter, merchants like Amazon, media companies like Netflix, ride-sharing services like Uber and others. Businesses are switching from monolithic architecture to microservices apps in this trend, setting new benchmark for the container technology and demonstrating the advantages of doing so. Here are some pros of microservices. Microservice architecture allows developers the opportunity to independently design and deploy services. A relatively small team of developers can create a microservice. Different languages can be used to write the code for various services. Simple integration and deployment using open source continuous integration tools such as Jenkins, Hudson's, etc. There is no need to modify and redeploy the entire application when a change is only necessary in a specific area of the application. Instead, just the corresponding services can be changed. At a fault isolation, the other microservices will still function even if the first one fails. Although one problematic area of the monolithic application can jeopardize the entire system. Simple to grow and incorporate with other services. Finally, no commitment to the technological stack for the long term. Now comes the cons of this microservices. Distributed deployment can make testing difficult and time consuming. Information obstacles may arise when the number of services increases. 
The architecture adds to the complexity because the developers must deal with the diversity of message formats, fault tolerance, network latency, and load balancing. Due to the distributed nature of the system, there may be duplication. As the number of services grow, managing entire products and their integration can get challenging. Developers must cope with the additional complexity of a distributed system on top of the numerous difficulties presented by monolithic architecture. In order to implement a mechanism of communication between the services, developers must expend more effort. Without the usage of distributed transactions, handling use cases that span many services is not only challenging but also necessitates cooperation and communication between various teams. Let's take a look at a few examples. The design of Netflix, which is widely used, has changed from monolithic to SOA. It receives more than 800 different types of devices, making more than 1 billion calls every day to its streaming video API. The backend service receives an average of 5 additional requests for every API call. Amazon has transitioned to microservices as well. Their previous two-tiered architecture would not have been able to handle the many requests they receive from a wide range of apps, including those that maintain web services, API, and the website itself. eBay, another example of transition like this, is the online auction site eBay. Their main application consists of a number of independent applications, each of which runs the business logic for a different set of functional domains. Lastly, what is the future of microservice? Whether or not microservice architecture becomes preferred development approach in the future, it is unquestionably a strong concept and significant advantages for developing and deploying corporate systems. Many developers and organizations have been utilizing a strategy to exploiting APIs that may be categorized as microservices without ever adopting the name or even labeling their prices. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you're subscribing to our YouTube channel and enabling that bell icon so that you will never miss any updates from IntelliPath. Just a quick info guys, if you want to make a career in cloud computing, then IntelliPath provides an advanced certification on cloud and DevOps by IIT Madras. This course is taught by industry experts and IIT Madras faculty. This course is designed to upskill and land your dream job.